What is up? What is up, guys? Let's see, where are we here? Ah, a few minutes before before noon on Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. We're going to talk about the overhead today. And um, yeah, so I uh, hope you're doing well and yeah, looking forward to it. Guys, when you um, get on, would love to know where you are today. I'm going to type a little something in here just to make sure that the comments are working. Guys, where are you today? Uh, let me know. Okay. So today we're going to give away, or I'm going to give away three, three copies of my full overhead course. Wags. Wow. Uh, God, I don't know, man. You always had a big time overhead, heavy overhead. Uh, thanks for hanging out today, Mark. Always good to have you on board, whether it's with Zoom or with this new platform I'm testing out today. Actually, something called StreamYard, and uh, I know, kind of late to the party on it. But uh, I'm going to use you guys as kind of the guinea pigs. First time out doing this, so we shall see. Um, we got Mr. Peabody. All right, Sacto Pete, man. Sunny and cool in Sacramento today. I'm assuming that's what Sacto is. Thanks for, uh, thanks for logging on. That's cool. And look, guys, uh, this is how you're going to be able to ask questions today is through the, the chat. Uh, just let me know if there's anything before we get started with the overhead. And look, uh, this is going to be a real simple, pretty short little um, coaching session today. I just want to kind of show you what's worked for me. Kind of the one big myth that uh, I eventually, eventually figured out that it wasn't right. At least it wasn't working for me and kind of what's been working instead. And maybe you can get a little a little nugget from that as well. So, guys, as you get logged on, thank you for hanging out. If you haven't found the chat area, it's somewhere there. Just go ahead and find it. Let me know where you are today. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to give away three copies of my full overhead course today, Did uh, video course. Just got off the court. Just got off the court here in Rancho Mirage. At the Mission Hills Country Club, playing on the grass. The grass courts have been open for, what's the day, the 10th? They've been open for 10 days. They opened them up on the on uh, November 1st. And if you've been here before, this is like, this is like grass court nirvana. I guess Wimbledon is better. I've never been to Wimbledon and I've never, you know, seen the courts there. So I don't know. So I'm, I'm assuming it's got to be a little bit better, but. Man, these courts are like a billiard table. They are gorgeous. They are beautiful. Something to do with the, the sand base and the heat. And I guess because we've got a couple of world-class golf courses, the guys know how to cut the grass and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, all good. Um, let me go ahead and bring up one of the videos we're going to look at today, which is this one right here. Um, and, uh, hold on for one sec. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, guys, would someone just confirm that you can see the video, at least the start of the video that I'm about to play along with me on the, on the left side of it, little tiny box. I mean, the left side, just kind of confirm that you can see that video on your screen. Okay. Um, Sacto Pete, does Rancho Mirage have a rental office looking for a place to stay during uh, 2021 Senior Cup? Uh, I don't know if they do have a specifically a rental office. Um, I'm assuming they do. Um, but the other thing is to go on to VRBO. That would be another way to, um, to take a look at what's available during uh, during that time of year. Obviously, if you're thinking about the BNP, who knows what's going to happen next year. But, uh, hey, man, you know, make sure that um, 
make sure that you get on any kind of accommodations you're, that you're looking for, that you're looking for early for sure. Um, okay, good. I got, a, I got 1158 down here in the desert. Let's, let's wait just a couple more minutes before we get started. And, uh, let me move this over here again. Uh, I'm using StreamYard first time on StreamYard uh, for streaming this, and uh, so if there's a glitch or 17, sorry, sorry, we'll get through it. We'll be fine. Um, so what else is going on out there today, guys? Um, if you're just getting logged on, would love to know at least where you are today, and. Uh, you know, if you've got any questions about the overhead before we get started here in one minute, would be cool. Just go ahead and type them into the into the uh, chat area and let me know. Okie doke, okie dokie. Well, I think what I'm going to do today is when I give away the three the three copies of my overhead course with the full overhead course and we're not, you know we don't have time to go through the whole thing today but um i'm not quite sure how i'm going to evaluate who the winners are other than who's going to come up with the most awesome questions about the overhead we'll kind of start with that as maybe a qualifier of someone i'm gonna you know i got three of them to give away um uh, oh looky looky there look at that okay all right uh, guys, I've got high noon. I want to get started so that uh, I'm respectful of your time today. And first of all, thanks for hanging out. Uh, short notice. And if this works, you know, if you guys love this, I want to do this a lot um, uh, because I think this is a great way to get onto YouTube and get onto Facebook as well. So, um, you know, I'm going to um, El Cerrito, California. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start this video. And I don't know if you can hear the audio. I'm assuming that you can see it playing. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and back this up. Just go, someone type in there, um, can you hear the audio? And if you can't, that's fine. doesn't matter. Um, but let me know, is there audio coming through? If not, that's fine. So yours truly, right here with the return to serve. Um, this is court nine, the world famous Berkeley tennis club, uh, a match I played a while ago, just a practice match. And what we're going to look at here is eventually I'm going to play an overhead and I, I'm going to kind of bust that myth that I think a lot of players think about with their overhead. And, and here it comes right here. Um, so look, here's, if you take the term overhead, um, maybe not for you, but I certainly decades ago thought, well, gosh, maybe I need to play the ball. Maybe I need to position my, my, my feet so that I get to make contact over my head. I mean, that sounds, that sounds kind of normal, right? And so for a long time, that was what happened. I was, I was positioning myself so that the ball was played over the top of my head. And sometimes it would be too far in front. Sometimes it would drift to my left as right-handed player. Sometimes it would get back behind me. But my footwork was always such that I was always setting up with a ball that if I didn't hit, it was going to literally land on top of my head. And, and I, you know, where I got that, I don't know, other than just interpreting, trying to literally, you know, in, interpret, I got to play an overhead. So that didn't work out. I mean, certainly I could get the ball and play, but really what I want to help you guys with is how do we get natural power when we play the overhead, whether it's like this one, which is on the fly, or whether you let it bounce, um, it's kind of like the serve, is I like to play it more to the right, right? I like to position my feet so that I get more of the contact to the right of me as a right-handed player, because from here, it's kind of like, it's like a natural throwing motion, right? I mean, it really is like a natural throwing motion, which is when we throw, we don't actually come from behind our head and release the ball from on top of our head. And by the way, I got out today with my friend Owen, and we we we, we brought our baseball gloves out and you know a hardball, 
And for about 10 minutes, we played catch. And, you know, that's nothing more than just, I mean, you know, when you play catch with someone, you don't come out from behind your head. You actually throw the ball from, and you release it, um, if you're right-handed, to the right. It comes out over your throwing shoulder. And so today's thing with him was warming up, was just simply trying to kind of loosen up the shoulder. But if you look at this, and I'm going to play this in real time a little bit, so that you can see that you're to get a lot more swing speed, a lot more natural swing speed there, right? And look, I don't have the biggest overhead in the world. The guys I play with, like I got a doubles partner, Chris Morgan, he can absolutely unload on the overhead. And I guarantee it, I guarantee it, he's a right-handed player, that he allows the feet to get to the side of the lob so that from here, you can naturally, as if it's a throwing motion, and there you can kind of release the wrist. You can just let it release. And you'll naturally get some power, right? And so here's the other thing to think about is when you think about the overhead in terms of getting natural power is that when we, th when we, when we get ready to throw a ball, the last thing we do, and imagine you, you've, you know, that you've got a ball and you're going to throw it kind of up towards that back fence, right? Up towards the the incoming uh, ball is that you don't squeeze tight. You don't grip that, that, that baseball um, tightly. It's just in your hand. It's just kind of, it's not, it's not in there tight. And it's the same thing you want to feel here. we here with the racket is that a lot of players, I used to do this. I'd get a little tense right about here, kind of get a little grippy on the racket and what happens. You know, the racket speed slows down. Well, look, power on the overhead is not about how strong you are. It's about how much racket speed can you generate, right? And some guys have got, you know, ultra technique in terms of being able to reach up with the shoulder, being relaxed. Their point of contact is slightly in front, but it's to the right if they're right-handed. And you just have to, you have to let it go. You can't, you can't push hard through. A lot of guys think, well, I'm going to hit this overhead with power, which means I'm going to be strong. And that doesn't work. When you think of power, don't think of, 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 of power in terms of I'm going to hit it hard. Think of power in terms of I'm going to generate racket speed. And racket speed is a release point with a racket head that's natural, which is not over your head and is not gripping is not gripping the uh, the racket the racket tightly. So, what does that bring up for you, right? What are you guys thinking about when when I'm talking about get the ball to your right and let it go? Don't be thinking about being strong. Think about what do you have to do to create racket speed, right? And so, one of the things that I've been doing because I just got back from Colorado uh, down here in the desert literally a week ago last night. Now, today was the eighth day in the court, haven't played much. And so I've lost some racket speed on the serve and the overhead. So yesterday when I went out and I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head here, but yesterday I went out with, you know, some balls and just, just right around the service line. And I did this with Mr. Stowe to try to develop rackets, to, to, to try to develop power, which was, he just said, how much racket speed can you bring from back here in the baseline to where you could actually hit the back fence on a line, right? It has nothing to do with thinking about serve technique. It has nothing to do with thinking about, well, I want to get the ball. I want, I want to make sure I'm hitting the ball inside the court, inside the service box. No, all you're trying to do is develop racket speed. And I can't do it anymore because I'm an old fart. So I can still hit the back fence from here back in the baseline. I can hit the back fence over there, but it's not in a straight line like it used to be. It's got a little bit of shape to it now. But, you know, all I did yesterday is hit about 50 serves, uh, half from the deuce court and half from the ad court, just trying to develop, trying to get back into what do I have to do to get racket speed? And and it's just kind of a buildup process. And it's the same thing here what I'm feeling now, which I'll do for the next few weeks on my overhead, is I don't really care. Of course, I care if they go in or not. But I'm not thinking about hitting a winner. I'm not thinking about, 
you know, placement. Yeah, I got a general idea of placement. But for the next couple of weeks, all I'm doing is what do I have to do to get my feet organized so I get the ball slightly to my right, my grip is relaxed, and I just reach up and let it go. Just let it go. And on this one here, if you find the guy's feet, congratulations. If you don't, if you hit it against the back fence, that's okay. That's okay. Is you're trying to develop that feeling of what do you have to do to really be able to build up some racket speed, not only in your serve, first serve, obviously in your second serve, but also on your overhead. So the the two takeaways from today that I want you guys to get, and let me do this. I'm going to um, I'm going to stop sharing and bring in another another uh, video. Uh, it's right here. And I want you, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. I want to, uh, this one. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Get rid of that. And let's see what you guys are seeing. Okay, good, good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, okay, so let's, let's look at, let's look at this point. Another, another doubles point. And by the way, as I was saying yesterday, actually from right about here in the court, I had my, my little bag of practice balls. I hit 25 from this side, 25 from the ad side. But all I did right here was go ahead and just see where do I have to put the toss? Where does it have to be? Well, for me, it has to be to the right. If I want to generate racket speed, it can't be in front of me, right? It can't be. I mean, here, here, here's the ball slightly to my right. I can't have it out here because I don't want the racket coming from back behind my head. I actually want it coming from, from behind my shoulder, and that's where contact is right there. Now, look, so it comes out. So the toss is to the right. And the toss is slightly in front, so you can build up some racket speed. And I'm going to do the same thing this afternoon. We'll be done here in, I don't know, 15, 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever it is. Have a little lunch, a little digest, go out in the court this afternoon with the balls and just start to build up that racket speed again that, you know, I, I've sort of lost over the last few months of not playing very much being in, being in Colorado. So here we go. First volley. Here's a good lob, right? And all I'm thinking about now is, okay, I don't have an opportunity to play an overhead, a classic overhead, but I do want to see if I can't keep the ball to my right, not over my head, keep the ball to my right, and just dump it back. Just dump it back so that I can somewhat not have to retreat, right? And, and, and again, now this lob actually happens to be right to my right. And it's almost the same one as before, right? I've got it slightly to my right where I can, I can naturally build up some racket speed and let it go. Just let it go. Is it a winner? No, but is it a push? Absolutely not. Um, so let's play this thing in real time. Let's kind of go through the whole thing here. And The two things for today, get the ball to your right if you're right-handed and play it in front and let it go. Do not push it. If you're looking for if you're looking for power, think of it in terms of racket speed and racket speed is nothing more than placing it in that spot that's natural for you. At this point, relax the grip and let this racket just go. I mean, you can kind of see it right here. It doesn't stop. It doesn't push. It just releases. And sometimes, you know, sometimes the word snap, I mean, a lot of coaches will say, well, you got to snap the racket through. And every time I think about snapping, you know, what happens is I get a little clenchy. I get a little strong in the grip. And that doesn't work. You want to relax the grip and just release it and let it go. And if you've got the ball over your head on top of it, tough to do, right? So, so there you have it. All right, guys, look, um, I am going to go look at the comments here. I want to give away at least one 
copy of um, of my full overhead course. And uh, I'm going to look at uh, who's coming up with some great questions. Um, yeah, Teresa, I'll tell you what, Teresa, I'm going to answer your question. I love this. And uh, let me make sure I write it down. And in fact, Teresa, here's what I want you to do. Uh, send me an email. Um, let me do this. Send me an email to right there. Uh, let's go with, uh, that's fine. Yeah. Brent at web tennis.com is the email. I want you to, um, send me an email cause I'm going to answer your question here. I want to send you uh, a copy of it, but, um, Teresa is asking, is it wise to hit an overhead on a lob from the back of the court? And so look, uh, Teresa, great question. And here's what I do. If it's from the back of the court, um, and, and so the way I look at this is, is that, um, if it's, if it's such a deep lob that if I let it bounce, it's going to continue to take me way out of the court, right? Way, way back out of the court, which means that if I do that, then you know what, I'm just going to go back there and play a lob back to them. But if I feel that, um, it's a lob that, that if I do let it bounce, <laughs> that I'm never going to get back to it, then absolutely. Then I've got to hit the overhead and I've got to try to just in my mind as I'm looking up the ball, I got to be thinking about, well, you know, where, where are my opponents? And, and if I've got an opponent cross court in the back court, then that's where I'm going to try to hit it. Obviously. Right. I don't want to hit it to a net player because I can't get much on it. Now, if it's a really, really high, deep lob that uh, is going to bounce and kind of go back straight up, then I'm going to really hustle back. I'm going to get in position, let it bounce. And could I play an overhead from back there in the baseline? Sure, I could. Sometimes I will. Other times I'm just going to go ahead, maybe get around it and play either a lob back to them, maybe play it kind of a top or forehand. But whatever it is. If I can get back behind it to where it's not pushing me back further, I'm going to think about, can I play the overhead? Can I play a forehand? Maybe it's a backhand, doesn't matter. Or can I play a lob as an approach shot? I would love to reclaim my net position because what's the reason that they lob me, right? They would like to flip the net position in doubles. And, and so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and look, if they're both up at net, they lobbed over me, and all that time has meant that they've been able to kind of get good net positions, then unless it's a relatively short ball, I mean, short meaning maybe it's mid-court where I feel like I've really got, I, mean, I, I can really unload the on the overhead, I might hit it there. But by and large, I'm going to try to reflip the court position and just play a deep defensive lob. And if it's great, just go ahead and move back in. So – uh, Teresa, let me know if that answered, if that answered your uh, question. Good. Um, so let's go. Who do we got here? Uh, let's give away another, um, another copy of the, of my full, my full overhead course. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Hope it's coming through clearly. Hope the video is not totally jumpy and and glitchy, but it's got some smoothness when I'm playing it real time. Um, let's see. Uh, Tennis Stance is asking, not sure if this is true, but shouldn't the shoulders be a little more side on, shoulders facing slightly to the right in that post instead of... Um, all right. I love it. Tennis Stance. There we go, baby. Great question. Um, not sure if this is true, but shouldn't the shoulders be a little more side uh, on shoulders facing slightly to the right of the net post instead of having the shoulders parallel to the net on the overhead? No question. I mean, you need to get sideways like you do in a serve, right? Sometimes you can't. Like, so for example, in, um, in this, let me see, what did I do? <laughs> Again, bear with me. Um, on this example of the overhead of the first lob, I don't really have any time because this is not going to be an overhead, right? This is nothing more than just kind of a hybrid high forehand volley. It's not really an overhead. 
I'm just trying to maintain core position, right? I would love to be able to do whatever I have to do to not give up the net position and retreat. So could I go ahead? Would I have had time to turn the shoulders on this? Maybe. But I think in reality, lots of times, all we have time to do is just to scoot back a step or two, reach up, and just doink it back, right? I mean, try to play it deep enough where at least you can now recover and and not and not play it short where that where that opponent has really got an opportunity to kind of take in, I mean, kind of move in and take advantage. Now, this one here, this one is I get a little more time. So yeah, I do get a little bit more sideways. I mean, this is not, could I get more sideways? I probably could, probably could. But for me, I'm just trying to, it's a good lob, man. <laughs> It's a good lob. I'm just trying to get some racket speed, and and there you have it. And so let's go back and look at the other um, at the other video. Let me see if I can still bring that up and see if that doesn't maybe. Okay, I've lost it. Let me go find it again. My apologies. Uh, here it is. I've closed it. I've closed it, guys. I'm sorry. My apologies. So uh, that's what we've got for now. Next time I realize I can't close the video, uh, I, I got to go find it. So listen, um, I think that's a great question. I really hope that answered your question. Um, let me bring this back up. Uh, tennis stance, did that help at all? Did that make any sense at all? Um, Okay, good, good. Um, tennis dance. I'm going to send you. Uh, I want to send you a copy. So, why don't you go ahead and just send me an email, Brent at webtennis.com. Um, got Teresa and tennis dance here, and I'll go ahead and send you a copy of my full course on the overhead. Who else we got, guys? What's going on? Um, I don't I want the comments. Uh, again, I'm I'm new at this. <laughs> What's up, Tennis Parish Brothers? Um, what do you got here? Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to send me a video, if you want to send me any kind of videos, um, I'm more than happy to... Um, I'm happy to analyze your video. I mean, a lot of people don't want to see them on video, so they, that, so they don't even take it, right? They, they don't even shoot the video. But if you've got a video you want me to take a look at where the singles and doubles, more than happy to do a couple things. Number one is to talk about, you know, what's the right shot, which is shot choice and core positioning. And then number two, we could do a little technique on one of the shots if you want to do that. So I'm more than happy to do that. Um, uh, Mark is saying, I noticed that the first thing you do with your feet is a drop step with the right foot. Is that recommended? Uh, for me, it is. <laughs> but for other players, it's 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 whatever is natural for you. Here's here's what I would tell you, um, uh, guys, on 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 footwork is obviously the last thing we want to start doing is backing up, right? Where you're totally facing the net, because I've seen this, and you know, I've I. I tragically saw a guy in Florida, you know, he wasn't on my court. He was, he was somewhere else. And I just happened to be picking up balls from a lesson. This was in Key Biscayne, Florida, mid seventies. And here's a guy, you know, relatively older guy, probably seventies and lobs gets lobbed. He backs up, literally backs up. There's no shoulder turn at all trips. And the first thing to hit as he goes back is, is back of his head. And, um, you know, tragic, so, and look, coaches, I mean, I've done this with players before on my, on my teaching court, whether it's singles or doubles. And the first thing I tell them is when you back up, when the lob goes up, you have to, you have to turn your shoulders. And the first step has got to be, you've got to go sideways. You cannot just literally back up. And as soon as I see someone doing that, I stop and I just, I just say, look, I'll give you one more chance. But the next time I see anyone out here, literally back up, we're done because the risk of injury is, is just way too high. So Mark, I'm not going to tell you that there's a specific type of footwork. 
because that's way too confusing. All I can tell you is that as soon as the lob goes up, and, and look, here's one of the challenges that we have um, on the lob when it, uh, when, it, when it goes up, is that we, 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 we have to read the depth, right? Um, here, let me, in fact, let me, let, me, let me take it back in here. Is we have to, the first thing we need to do right here is, what's the depth? And typically what happens is we freeze for a moment right here. And we try to gauge what the depth is rather than assuming it's going to be deep and just turning and starting to go. Because if you take a couple of steps back and now all of a sudden you, you kind of realize, well, wait a minute, this ball's short. It's way easier to put the brakes on and move forward rather than kind of freezing for a second. And now all of a sudden the lob is deep and you got a problem, right? So, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of coaches, a lot of teaching pros want to get super technical with the footwork, whether it's a drop step, whether it's a jab step, I don't care what you do as long as whatever you do for you is natural and you get sideways, right? We got to get sideways anyway for the swing and you don't, you don't literally back up. Um, so it's enough of that. Uh, Mark with another question, how do you deal with a lob into the sun? Um, <laughs> well, you know, um, you got to put your hand up. I mean, I put the hand up initially. Sometimes that helps. Other times it doesn't. I mean, right off the racket, you know you're on the sunny side. So right off the racket and the lob, I instantly start to go back. I mean, and I can kind of gauge off their racket and before it gets into the sun, how deep it's going to be. And if it's going to be super deep, I just, I don't even think about anything other than I just got to hustle back. Right now, sometimes you can on certain lobs, you can kind of block the sun with your, with your non racket hand. But um, look, I mean, you got to practice this thing, right? You got to practice taking overheads and too many players go out there. It's a sunny day. Hey man, I'll tell you what I can't see. Can I go over there? No practice on that sun because when as my good friend bill mays <laughs> said you know does the sun come out on match days well of course it does so practice on that side um uh, okay what else we got here <laughs> thank you thank you omar i have a video brent giving doubles tips in a peter freeman course and Peter is in awe. Brent's amazing overhead. I, you know, Omar, thank you, man. And, and Peter, thank you. I, I don't have the biggest overhead in the world, um, but it's big enough because my whole, my whole strategy, my whole tactic on the overhead is I'm assuming it's going to come back no matter how well I hit it. Because as I'm looking up, right, as I'm looking up, I can't, I can't tell the opponent in singles or the opponents over there in doubles that you can't guess where I'm going to hit it, right? I mean, even if it's a big, fat, wide opening, doesn't mean that as I'm looking up that they're anticipating that's where I'm going and they start sprinting over there, right? So, um, look, um, I always think it's a two-shot play. So the first thing I'm thinking about is, number one, I want to make sure that I get to reclaim my position at net. If it's a really short lob, then yeah, maybe I'll be thinking about, well, where's the least place that they can go ahead and, and maybe guess where I'm going to hit it. And if they get there, um, you know, are they going to be so horribly out of position that whatever they come back with. Um, but so I'm always thinking two shots, always. I'm never thinking this is a winner. And I see lots of guys go, you know, I'm going to knock this thing off. And, and the next thing you know, if someone guesses where their overhead's going, they guess it and they lob even deeper the next time. And they kind of feel like they've failed, right? I didn't put it away. So always, always assume that's going to come back. And if it doesn't, congratulations. You know, you end up hitting a winner. Um, okay, what else we got here? Video's good. Thank you. Good. My man, Mr. Al Yearwood. Um, if you guys don't know Al Yearwood, um, he and I are in the same age group, exact same year, both born in 1948. 
Yes, a couple of old farts. Um, this guy, a tough hombre, and one of the few guys out there who really puts in the time on the practice court, who really puts in the time in the gym, and who really thinks a lot about about his game and where he is in terms of relation to the other guys, and he studies the other guys. And, and so my point with talking about Al Yearwood from Memphis, Tennessee, is that whatever age group you're in, if you want to become a better tennis player, uh, I would stop looking at Rafa. I would stop looking at Fed. I would stop trying to copy anyone who's not in your age group. Go find the top one or two or three guys in the country or maybe in the world in your age group. If you're 45 years old, if you if you want to get better, do what Al Yearwood does. He goes and studies the top guys in his age group. He goes to the tournaments. And if he doesn't win the tournament, he sits around for a day or two and, and he studies these guys. And so if you really want to see how to – if you want to win more matches – Go study the guys in your age group. Um, all right, Alec, it's your question, man. The problem, partner goes back for the overhead without turning. He scouts. He scoots back without turning. How do you fix it? Hey, man, um, Al, the only way to fix it is you got to go out there and ask someone, hey, would you mind hitting me 25 lobs in a row? And all your, you're not even thinking about the quality of the hit on the overhead. All that you're doing is you're trying to now develop that footwork pattern. And whether it's you or whether it's someone else, I mean, look, the most important thing about the overhead of the first two steps, right? The first three steps, can you get turned with the shoulders and can you make your feet, I mean, at least go sideways, right? At least side to side, but you can actually point your toes back to the baseline that you're running back away from, I mean, back towards, right? And still be looking forward. I mean, you can still be looking forward and, and, and actually be running backwards. And I'm not talking about backing up. I'm talking about turning, having that kind of flexibility. So you have to train it. And, and I do this. I mean, I ask my buddy Owen, hey, would you throw up you know, a few lobs for me? And I'm not thinking about the overhead. All I'm thinking about is, am I making sure that my instincts when the lob goes up is the first thing I do? Because I don't want to be standing there in a real match, trying to gauge what the depth is going to be and then start. I always want to assume it's going to be deep. So I always, the first thing I do, that lob goes up, I turn, the feet start to go, at least shuffle sideways, if not actually run back. And it's maybe for me, it's just not a natural thing. Maybe it is, but I make sure that that's part of my weekly drilling that I have someone throw up the lobs. And I, and again, sure, I'm going back there and hitting the overhead, but I'm not thinking so much about the quality of the overhead because I know if I get my feet right, if I get my shoulders right, if I get back early and, oh, that, that lob's short. Good. I put in the brakes. Now, boom. Now I'm actually moving in to play the overhead, which is, which is really what we want because, first of all, you get your feet in the right position. You get the ball not out over your head, but you get the ball to your right if you're right-handed. You, you get racket speed going. You recover, so you end up hitting a higher quality shot, but you get to recover that net position, which to me is like the most important thing in both singles and doubles. Um, hope that helped, Al. Uh, we got a good question here from the great Joe Daly. Joe, what's going on? Um Joe, a fellow member here at Mission Hills Country Club, Rancher Mirage, California. Um, and the targets are, um, well, there's a couple of targets I have in mind. Uh, on these points, you know, I really kind of hit them cross court uh, only because, um, sure, could I have gone to the middle? Of course. Could I have gone out wide? Maybe in the first video we watched, I could have. But I think on that first video we saw, I was thinking more about thinking more just about trying to get some racket speed. And I can't remember in that point if I was specifically going for the target. Here's what I would tell you with targets is that once we get really precise with our targets, I'm going right down the middle. I'm going to make sure this thing is right between these two guys. And you know what happens is we get a little tight 
because we really want to make sure that we get it over there, right? And we feel like if we have too much swing freedom where we're getting lots of racket speed that we kind of lose control of that target. And if you're going to err on one side or the other in terms of placement or racket speed, I'd rather have you, at least for now, develop the racket speed where, where you're, you're, you're really getting some racket speed. Yeah, you want to have a target in mind. But don't make it so precise that if you're you're off, you know, if, 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 if you're thinking middle and you don't go middle, you go cross court or you go up the line, that's fine. Remember, this is a this this is just a, 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 a progression of learning where you start to feel what you have to do to get racket speed to get the power you want. And so for me, my targets are a couple of things. And so um in singles, I'm primarily going to the ad court because as a right-handed player, I, if a lob comes back, I'd like it to come back into my overhead, right? So as a right-handed player, if I can play my overhead to that ad side, when they lob back, it's going to be coming into my overhead. If I hit my overhead to the do side, it's easier for them to lob slightly up the line which, which now makes it to my backhand side, which means that if I'm going to play an overhead, I've really got to get around it. So um, that's kind of thing one, unless I got a wide open court in singles, then that's when I'm going to do it. Um, and then in doubles, I like to play my overhead to that. I'm, I'm thinking of, well, if, if my partner and I are both up at net and that's, you know, I mean, look, if we have a righty lefty combo, then it's a no brainer. Um, if my partner is a lefty and they're in the deuce court and they've got a better overhead than I do, then you know what? I'm playing my overhead, assuming that I'm not at, going right at somebody, but I'm playing it over to the, to the deuce side. And the reason for that is the lobs likely to come back, uh, into the middle towards my partner. Right. And he's got the better overhead. So that's kind of my strategy. It's not real. It's not real fancy. I'm just looking, and I, like I said before, I'm assuming it's coming back because I can't tell those guys to not guess where I'm going to play it. So why not play it unless you have a fat opening somewhere else? Play it to that side to where if it does come back, it naturally comes into it naturally comes into your overhead. Um, one more question from Joe here is when you see a lob being hit, what is your first step? I mean, Joe, it is, it is, I'm assuming it's going to be deep. So as soon as I see that guy and look, lots of times we can actually kind of read out of our peripheral, we can read that racket, right? And we can see that it's, it's going to be a lob. I just start moving back. I get sideways with the shoulders and start and start moving my feet back. Um, okay. All right, Oliver. Uh, Ollie. Yeah. For low lobs, do you opt for a volley from Floodlands? Um, for low lobs, yeah. I mean, if I can get up to it, if I can get to it quickly, I'm going to play an overhead. But if I can't, yeah, it's got to – I mean, sometimes those low lobs are rough, right? I mean, it's a quick low lob, and all you can do is get up to it, or maybe it's head high. It's a shove volley, right? It's just, let's just shove it back there, play it deep, and um, and live to see another ball. Um, yeah, good, John. Um, always assume your overhead's coming back. Always. Always. Um, all right, Tennis Paris bros, thanks for hanging out. Love that. Um all right, guys, I'm going to uh, give out one more copy of the uh, – any more comments, any more questions? We've gone over the time. I, I was thinking 30 minutes today. We've gone quite a bit longer than that. Uh, if you've got another question, let me know. Um, you know, one thing I would like to know if you don't have any more questions is give me some feedback on this platform. This is called StreamYard, and it's just a platform being able to get it out to YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Uh, if I had a website, which I I guess I could embed it to the website too, but um, this is pretty cool. You guys like this, uh, 
if you guys like this platform. Okay. Um, let's go with, uh, oh, heck, let's go with Mark Jordan. Mark, I don't know if you've an all lessons package. If you are, you've already got the course. Um, if you don't, then shoot me an email, uh, Brent at web tennis.com. And I will, uh, I will get you a copy of it. If you, if you already, if you're already uh, an all lessons package member, uh, Mark, then I want to give away to someone else because you got full access to it. Um, so guys, that's it for me today. A couple other things. Uh, you know, if you got any other questions on your game, let me know, either just go ahead and put them in the comments area or shoot me an email, Brent at web Uh, you know, what's going on with your health, with your tennis fitness, you want some help in that area, either you got to, you got to shed some pounds, obviously in tennis, kind of a big deal. We got to be able to be lean and mean in tennis. If we're really going to compete at our highest level, singles and or doubles, uh, I got some recommendations for you. And, um, and look, if you're open to taking a look at something else I'm doing business wise, business wise, if you uh, want to take a look at a quick peek at a, you know, a little side business I've got going, be more than happy to show that to you. If not, no problem, no sweat. That's cool. But, uh, you know, if you got some interest in that, Brent at webtennis.com. And what else we got here? Um, Tennis Stance, thanks for hanging out. Um, William Peake, Cape Coral, Florida, thank you. Floodland, good deal. Thanks for going on. Joe Daly, thanks, man. Um, okay, good. Uh, you know, Joe, I'd love to know where you're – where your ball machine is um, and where you go. Maybe you go out in the hard courts. Anyway, let me know. Maybe I'll join you out there and see what you're, see what you're working on. All right, guys. Uh, if there's nothing else, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I enjoyed this as always love these live sessions with you guys love getting the feedback and any questions, comments you might have, even after we're done, just go ahead and load them up into the comment section as always. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. As always, get out there today and help someone else have a spectacular day.